And, you know, it's interesting is that we know that we're told different things affect us. But living in an information age and living in a cyber society that deals with technology on a regular basis of things that are what we call machinations or technocracy, meaning that technology has come to a place where it invades your personal life to such a degree that you feel like you have to have it, that your normal daily existence involves some form of technology, then you get farther away from the reality of what Jesus said is the spiritual world. Because you see, a hundred years ago, maybe now I guess it would be 200 years ago, people would not have imagined having a phone that you could video talk to someone else, much less television. They would not have thought of having a phone that you constantly have on your ear that you're talking to someone and being able to communicate long distance. They would not have immediately, and it may have been longer than 200 years, but they may not have immediately thought of all the different ways we use technology today to speak to one another, like texting with your thumb. But that also is what Jesus was trying to say when he came. He said, look, you don't even understand the things I'm trying to tell you about the spiritual world. So if I try to explain to you of heaven, you know, how can you receive those things when I can't even tell you about the world that you live in? So when you look at your technology, recognize that it has come as far away from what we call the agrarian or farm-based society as the spiritual dimension is from your technology. You see, technology is only a physical representation of what man has made, not what God has done. See, God created the world and then we took it and made it into our own image in some ways. We have made technology our own image for our own benefit. Now, we use that technology sometimes to point us to God, but the reality is God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So, it's kind of ridiculous for me to say that if you watch soap operas, you're going to be full of soap operas, because we know you're going to watch a soap opera. Or to say, if you watch rated R movies or rated X movies or porno on the internet, that you're going to be full of porno and it's going to affect you. Well, it's all true, but you're going to do it. Because it's been designed so easily for you to participate in it that nine times out of ten, most of people that deny being a part of it have involved themselves in it. So the reality of what we need to do is to recognize that if you do, what are you accomplishing in your life? You are filling up the cup of your life with something you don't want in there. So you need to remove it. You need to have it displaced by putting something else in its place. That's how you prevent sin from beginning in the first place. Instead of <clears throat> looking at technology as being evil, use technology for something good because God can take the Word of God and make it real to you fitting your peculiar Bible you might want to use or your specific hearing you might want to hear by a tape or video or even a devotional. But in the time that you might be spending watching some movie or some porno or some sinful activity, why not take that time and put something else instead to replace it? Because if it's godly, it will obsess you and possess you to cause you to quit participating in that which will fill up the cup of your life with sin and destroy you. We like to say that nature abhors a vacuum. Well, that's not true. But in the dimensionality of, of the world we live in, when you have something there, something else has to move out of the way. And Jesus said it this way, when the light comes in, darkness must flee. So it moves out of the way when light is there. So choose something other than the light of your own creation in technology, but use something that inside of that light would contain the light of the world, meaning God and His Word. When you do, <laughs> you'll sin less and find yourself not addicted to lust, to sinfulness, to evil desires, perversions, to 
questionable behaviors to suddenly being exposed by God and then falling from grace if you're a pastor, teacher, leader, whatever you may be. Because like the world says, hey, all of technology is very obvious just as easily as it's obvious to God. And God knows. So be forgiven, fill it with something else, and do something else today with God. And you may find your way a whole lot easier. In God calling, you are mine. Isn't that good? Jesus, thou art watching over us to bless and to care for us. Yes, remember that always, that out of darkness, I am leading you to light. Yes, you start in darkness, and yes, I am bringing you out of darkness. Out of unrest to rest. Out of disorder to order. Out of faults and failures to perfection. I am doing it. So trust me completely. Trust me wholly. Fear nothing, always hope. Look ever up to me, and I will be your sure aid. I will comfort you, I will strengthen you, I will guide you. I and my Father are one. So he who made the ordered, beautiful world out of chaos, and set the stars in their course, and made each plant to know its season, can he not bring out of your little chaos peace and order? Can he not strengthen you? Can he not encourage you? Can he not perfect you? And he and I, the Father, are one, and you are mine. Your affairs, your worries, your cares, your desires, your wishes, your wants, are mine. It is my divine task to order my affairs, therefore yours will be ordered by me. God is at work both to do it to will of his good pleasure in you, and sometimes that means working around you, sometimes that means working with you, sometimes that means working to you, and sometimes it means accomplishing in you what he desires for you to become with your permission as you gave it at the moment of salvation, sometimes without your knowledge because you just didn't agree with the program. But I can tell you this, if you start each day with him, it gets easier every day. If you resist, <laughs> like anything else, when you're trying to swim up river, if you let go, you're going to go far, far away from your destination. Today, with God, let him have it back again and recognize he's got your best interest in heart and he's taking care of you every step of the way.